Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Blackmagic Camera Update 6.1 that is primarily aimed at Pocket Cinema Camera 4K users. The update has been available for almost three weeks now and I've really just taken that time to be able to use the camera in real world scenarios to see what's what. What I actually did is I updated my camera two days after the release of the update without having a look at the official software update changelog. I figured this would be the best way to be able to distinguish between the changes that are actually noticeable in real life and those that are under the hood and somewhat not measurable. In typical Blackmagic fashion, the update process is actually very straightforward. You go onto the BMD site and download the update file. The site will ask for your camera serial number and a few other questions like what you primarily use the camera for and any function suggestions you have for future updates. After downloading the file, all you have to do is install the Blackmagic camera software and from there it's a matter of running the app and connecting your camera to your computer. First and foremost, and perhaps the one feature that everyone was excited for, is the addition of Blackmagic RAW. Unfortunately, it is not in this update for the Pocket 4K for reasons that are still unknown. The software update actually installs Blackmagic's RAW player onto your computer, but no actual BM RAW functionality for the Pocket 4K, which I find to be pretty funny. I suspect that they're probably having some technical issues with that codec on this camera. After three weeks of use, I've actually been pretty disappointed with the update, if I'm completely honest. For most of my use, I barely even noticed a lot of the fixes and updates that Blackmagic made. I'll begin with the most noticeable changes first. First one for me has to be the battery glitch from the previous software. For those that didn't know, this camera had an issue where the battery would randomly die while you're shooting. And most of the time, the battery wasn't even empty or even close to being empty. I had instances where the camera would shut off with about 60% of juice on the battery bar. I'm happy to report that that glitch is finally fixed and now the camera actually lasts about 40 to 50 minutes on the supplied battery and consistently dies when the battery is actually low. I have no idea how they've done this considering that such issues are usually hardware related, but my guess would be they've changed algorithms that affect the efficiency of the camera. The next biggest update for me is the SSD issue. Now I made a rather controversial video called The Truth About the BMPCC 4K and in that video I outlined numerous issues I was facing with my unit. One of those issues was a pretty annoying glitch where the camera would suddenly stop recognizing my Samsung T5 portable SSD that I record to. This was a pretty serious drawback for me and there were situations where I tried restarting the camera pulling out the battery, disconnecting and reconnecting the SSD countless times on a shoot without any luck. I am pleased to report that the glitch has been fixed and now your SSD should be recognized no matter if it is connected while the camera is on or off. Another improvement I really appreciate is the updated formatting menu. It now requires you to press and hold the format button for three seconds to make sure you're absolutely certain about erasing everything. And that is pretty much it really. From my use, those are the only noteworthy changes that I've actually seen and been able to notice while using the camera. Which is quite surprising to me considering the number of fixes Blackmagic listed on the official changelog when I finally did get the chance to go through it. There's a new pixel remapping feature that was added which allows you to identify dead or stuck pixels on your sensor. It's really just a preventative maintenance technique that can help you avoid having to send your camera back to have the sensor map. It's important to note that while this is a preventative measure, it cannot fix a dead pixel. Once a pixel is dead, then that sensor needs to be physically repaired as it is a hardware issue. Pixel remapping just allows software in the camera to be able to isolate a dead pixel and mimic what it should be doing. So in other words, effectively masking the dead pixel but not fixing it. Here's the full list of all the changes from Blackmagic's official site. Some features like two to one frame guides are very much appreciated even though I never personally stumbled across them during the last three weeks of use. Blackmagic also say they have improved autofocus performance and from what I can tell, I've tested it on a couple of my lenses and there's no noticeable improvement that I can point out. It is of course still a contrast-based AF system, so it is not usable while recording. It still breathes back and forth like crazy and it is still very noisy on some of my lenses, which is exactly how it was before the update. One very interesting update is at the very bottom where Blackmagic say they have 
updated the dynamic range and ISO chart in the user manual, which makes absolutely no sense. This is the previous chart on the left and the new one on the right. They're significantly different and they really shouldn't be though. Dynamic range is a hardware dependent characteristic. You know it the minute the sensor is made. So I don't understand how BMD is updating the dynamic range chart. This can only mean that the initial chart that Blackmagic provided to us was absolutely bogus and the new chart is the real chart with real figures and values or vice versa. It all seems very shady if you ask me. I've never heard of anything like that from any camera manufacturer and without any logical explanation for it to say the least. So that is update 6.1 for the BMPCC 4K. Now of course I am sure that there are tons of changes that BMD has made under the hood that an average consumer probably won't be able to notice. But this is just my experience in a nutshell and the changes that I actually noticed and those that I believe are actually tangible. Overall, this feels like such an incremental update to me and one that should have come with the addition of Blackmagic RAW capabilities like we were all expecting. I think that besides all the glitches and minor issues, the one feature that we wanted to see first and foremost in this update was BM RAW and unfortunately Blackmagic did not deliver on that front. It's nice to see a lot of the release day glitches all cleaned and ironed out, but for the most part, this update is rather underwhelming and I'm one of those people that will still be eagerly awaiting the launch of Blackmagic RAW on the Pocket 4K amongst other things. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been useful to you. Please drop a like or a comment if you enjoyed the video and if you didn't enjoy it, make sure you hit that dislike button twice. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified as soon as those videos are available. Catch you folks in the next one. Oh,